Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is Elgato's Ring Light. This is a new 17 inch edge lit ring light illumination system that's designed for content creators, fashion bloggers, beauty enthusiasts, all sorts of things like that. But it's also useful for me for a number of reasons, and I'm going to show you why as I unbox it and talk to you about the highlights, features, specifications, things I like, and things I don't. Now, this is a new kit which has only just been released recently, which is really interesting for a number of reasons. It has a number of really cool features to it. For example, it's obviously an Elgato system, which means that it works with Stream Deck. You can set up with an Elgato's command center. You can get it working with Elgato's key lights as well and combine those two together so you can create a really bright and wonderful look on your desk. It also is incredibly bright, up to 2,500 lumens, controllable within the apps. And I'll show you that later on. You can also adjust it between 2,900 and 7,000 Kelvin in terms of color warmth. So you can adjust between sunset amber and arctic blue is what they say. But basically it means like a orange to a really sort of harsh blue. And it has Osram LEDs in it that they say have no flicker in them. They're also facing outwards so they're not pointing directly at you. So you don't have the lights pointing directly into your eye. But rather through this diffuse ring around the outside. Another highlight is that it comes with this desk mount. Which as you can see is a chunky wonderful system on its own a nice sturdy adjustable in height terms mount so i'm going to show you mounted to the desk and there's also a little quirk in that, that i'll talk you to you a bit later on about which is a really nice design feature too i was immediately struck by a few nifty little design features of this light and the highlights of it there are some quirks as well though that are worth seeing but it is a fantastic bit of kit. Now, as you can tell from the box, this ring light has space for a camera in there. Now, it can handle up to a certain weight of camera, and I'll include the information in the specs and description below. But basically, you can mount a digital camera, let's say a DSLR. I'm gonna use a Lumix GH4 in mine, and it, it handled that with quite a hefty lens on it as well. But if you have a lighter, smaller, compact camera, you'll find that works easily. You'll also find in the box there's an adjustable ball mount, so a camera mount. So you can basically put your camera on here and then you can adjust the angle and tilt of it within the ring, which is pretty nifty. Comes with a power plug and obviously the relevant adapters for your area. One quirk of this is it's quite a chunky plug. I found a um, weird problem, but I was trying to plug it into an extension lead that I had and there were other plugs that got in the way just because of the sheer length of the thing. It's a bit of a chunky monster. Now here you can see the ball mount. It just basically screws down, tightens up on there. And then you'll see there's a wheel at the back that allows you to adjust the tightness of the mount when it's in the right place. So you can attach your camera to the top of it and then screw that down. One thing I was curious is whether the camera would fit directly on the ring if you wanted straight ahead view and you didn't need to adjust it and the answer is yes so standard both those screws are standard camera screws the right size to be able to fit and just screw into your camera with ease so you can basically attach your camera straight on like that which is ideal if you're going to be standing in front of it at a perfect angle but obviously the ball mount gives you the flexibility to not only have the camera more central to the light but also to adjust the angle of it as you'll see later on i'm putting it behind my desk above my monitor because I find like, this light will be useful for reviewing headsets and things where I'm looking directly at the camera and talking to it but I want to show you what's on my head and talking to you about that and that's obviously the main goal of a light like this is to highlight your face, your facial features and give you a really nice light that you can, you know, you'll see the ring in people's eyes when they're talking and stuff. People love this sort of light and it works really well. On the light itself you'll also see lighting controls so as well as the controls in the app and in the software and via Stream Deck, you can also control it directly on the light itself. You have a plus and minus button that allows you to adjust the brightness. And if you press and hold those, you can then go through the color effects as well. So you can choose between those levels and change that too. The thing itself is pretty huge. As I said, 17 inches, so big enough to put a DSLR in the middle of. And I was surprised by how big it was. When I was pitched the thing by Elgato, I thought, oh, it's gonna be, you know, a smallish, light and it's going to be fine but this is actually quite big so it does take up a bit of room but it's also a compact system so it sits quite flat against the wall i've got it mounted to the back of my desk for example so it sits quite flush to the wall and it doesn't take up too much room with that 
mounting system it also mounts on nicely to the desk you can also get Elgato's various different multi mounting systems that you so you can adjust it the way you want you can also get a base as an optional purchase so you can put it on a base instead of on a stand on your desk so there are various different ways to mount it various different options on how to secure it in your area it's worth noting here the wobble you're seeing that is not the final tripod i was just using another one temporarily to see what the various different options were for setting it up so i was using my own monopod which is a bit wobbly so ignore the wobble here that isn't what you'll see as the final result i was just testing something out the actual mount that you'll see as as i showed you earlier on is this sturdy thing nice bit of metal and a good solid mounting to it you also know at the top basically there's a tightening loosening system that allows you to adjust it easily bit of a squeak on mine but then you can extend it so it's an extension pole and it goes quite tall and as I'll show you in a minute that does actually go quite high it doesn't actually go low enough for me I wish it went a bit a little bit lower as well but that's not a problem because you have the ball mount and you can adjust it why it's an issue potentially for me is because it's a bit higher than my eye line on my desk so I couldn't necessarily get my head level with the camera so I'd have to compensate for that by putting angling the camera down but the light is so bright that it's really bright and you'll see a good effect there. Mounting it on the desk as well I have a rather chunky work surface it's about 40 millimeters deep it's quite wide but as you can see there's a nice padded solid base here it's got a good heft to it it's not going to damage the desk or the wood the way it's designed it's going to sit on there really nicely and comfortably and it's going to stay there as well. One of the highlight that I noticed, I mounted it here initially for testing purposes, then I went on to put it where it actually was going to end up, which is at the back of my desk. And one of the things I've discovered is that because of that long handle, you can't turn the thing all the way around to keep tightening it. But there's a button underneath, you can push that in, pull the lever down, and then turn it back around again, and then you can keep on cranking, so you can basically do that and then tighten it up without having to turn the lever all the way around really simple design that I've not seen on other sort of clamps like this for various boom arms and things so that's a really nice touch as well it means if you're in a position like I am and you're mounting it in an area where you can't turn the handle all the way you can still tighten it up so it sits perfectly on the desk so as I said this is at the back of my desk now mounted against the wall and it's secured properly so it's not going to wobble around or be a problem but just to show you again what it's like on the edge of the desk because this is another option can see quite a sturdy looking thing as I said there are aftermarket accessories that you can get from Elgato where you can get various different mounts so you could have it at an angle so I'm already contemplating maybe I get another one so I get it at a right angle then I could get a downward facing view of my desk and have backlit camera goodness for capturing unboxing footage which would be perfect for my use so there might be various different use cases for this and I was surprised by how bright and customizable it is too shouldn't be that surprised so another thing of note, please ignore that daddy long legs in the corner, didn't notice him. <laughs> Trouble with having bright lighting in a room is that moths and creatures keep coming into my room when I'm doing things like this. Anyway, you can see the camera system, basically you can adjust the ball mount on the camera, you can tilt it in different directions. Obviously the weight of your camera is going to vary. If you have a microphone and a heavy lens strapped to it and other things, it might be that it's too heavy so it's worth checking the specifications because it has got a maximum weight in it but for reference it works with my Lumix GH4 with a pretty hefty lens on it it's the macro lens at the moment but I tried another ultra wide angle lens as well another thing you can do with the ball mount on the top is you can actually adjust it and then tighten it up so you can have it at an angle so it doesn't even have to be straight on and perfectly facing you a demonstration of where the weight might become an issue is though when I tried to do it the other way it wouldn't tighten up enough worth bearing in mind and testing out these things but it is quite a flexible system as you see already that isn't even at full height and it is actually in a quite tall position so to demonstrate just how high it goes you can see it obviously drops down but you can also do the reverse and raise it all the way up and it's really easy to do that we just need to roll that wheel to tighten and loosen it and drop it up and down so a nice extension pole pretty basic system but very effective and now when it's mounted on the desk it's the same height as me so I'm just about 5 foot 11 just for reference so you can see how tall it can get to so obviously this is going to vary depending on the height of your desk but it's worth bearing in mind that that is what you end up with and because of the thread system on the bottom you could potentially just mount it to a tripod as another option as well on the right hand side you'll see the power switch on one side it has 
to the power to turn it on. On the other side, you can press and hold it to reset it. So if you have any trouble, and then obviously the power plug plugs in on the left. The setup process is really simple. Once it's plugged in and turned on, obviously setting it up, putting it on the mount, you can then basically get the software going. I started by using the app, and I'll show you that in a second on the phone. And the process for that is dead simple. I'll leave links to the app in the description so you can check it out. But once you have that installed, it will then scan for nearby lights as long as they're turned on. And it will find them easily too. And then you just basically have to go through some steps to pair it with your Wi-Fi. And that process then allows you to adjust the light, turn it on and off. And obviously even pair it up with key lights, for example. You can see me here adjusting the lighting with the manual controls though, and you can get an idea of just how bright it goes. Or it's difficult to do it justice on camera because it affects the lens and the way it's working, but you can see how much brighter that gets and how dim it gets by comparison. And it also, when you change between the color temperatures as well, there's a noticeable shift in the differences there. And that's something I wanted to talk about actually, because when I went through them, I noticed that I have that set to a certain brightness if I go through the different color temperatures, some of the temperatures seem like they were brighter than others. So you might need to play around with what temperature you're using uh, on specific brightnesses to find the right one for you. Obviously this is going to vary in the results you want and what look you're wanting on your face and also what your lens is doing and what your camera setup's like. So things like that and adjusting. But here you can see the setup uh, again, as I was saying, basically within the control center app, you're basically clicking to add an accessory, finding it and putting it on your Wi-Fi. You can then adjust the brightness and the color temperature with ease from these sliders. And you'll note that the sliders above are also moving. So if I turn on the key light air that I have there as well, you can also adjust it so that the brightness of both and the color temperature of both correspond with each other. So you could set these up as lights on the side and then have that ring light in the middle and adjust to fit your needs. Really easy to control that way. One thing I did note is that when I then went to set it up within the software, it wasn't immediately recognized. I then had to go through the reset process in order to get it going. Now I did a separate video on how to use Elgato's cam link to, to then use your DSLR as a webcam and I'll leave a link to that in the description so you can check that out too. But you can see me here using the controls and then checking what the results are within OBS Studio so you can see the brightness of it. it really easy to do on the fly and it's nice to have those controls too. As I said you can also use it with Stream Deck and I'll show you that setup in a minute which means with the press of a button you can turn those lights on and off and adjust that too, whether that's brightness or the colour temperature. One thing I will say is that it does go very, very bright, but as I said earlier in the video, those lights are diffused, so they aren't shining directly at you, they're actually shining out to the sides and then bouncing towards you, so you've got a really nice sort of soft diffusal of the light that isn't too taxing on the eyes. I'm going to use this for streaming at the weekends and it's a more direct but also a really big light source that should hopefully result in a much better overall experience. Now, when I went to use the control center software, I found that the light wasn't recognized immediately. You can see my key light airs appearing in here. But if you go to click on the little plus symbol, you can then add another accessory. And that's what obviously the process to do is, and then it will scan for nearby accessories. And it had an issue because it said no accessories found. If you have this problem, it's worth checking for updates to the software because I had an update required on mine. And obviously this is a, a new device, so it's worth making sure the software is up to date and has the latest updates. And then you're probably more likely to be able to get that light installed on there. Once I've done that, actually I'll get it to work quite easily. Another thing to do is if you paired it up with your phone, you just press and hold the reset button underneath. So the opposite way to power, and then that'll reset. You'll see the light flash and you'll know it's reset. And then you can go into the accessories network thing on your computer. So through the command center, press that plus button, and then it should find the light. And then you just need to pair it with your Wi-Fi network. It's the same process as you'd use on your phone, but it shows that you can use your phone or your PC or your Mac or both. And the setup process is fairly straightforward. And then you have the controls directly within the software, which is in the taskbar on Windows and is easy access to. 
This is basically the same process of the key light airs. So check out that video if you've not seen it already. Those lights are also fantastic for diffused lighting. Now I've already been thinking, as I said, about multi-mounts and the options for tilting the light. So if you're not necessarily someone that's into having a light shining directly on their face and you don't want necessarily that diffuse light look with the ring around it, you might find there are other uses for this light. If you're like me as a content creator and want to capture video of things, I'm already thinking about the potential for tilting the mounts down so you can aim, aim the camera down or aim the light down towards the desk. One thing to bear in mind is the weight of the camera is going to affect that because I found that when I loosened it, I couldn't tighten it up because of the weight of the camera pulling the light down. However, as I said, you can get multi-mount options from Elgato. And if you had a smaller compact DSLR like a Sony, for example, that might not have as much heft to it, then it might work. I'm going to play around with this a bit more in the future and see how we get on though because this ring light will be very useful for lighting up the various things that I'm doing. Now you can see within the Stream Deck software, Stream Deck's another thing I've done a video on if you've not if you're not aware of it, this is an excellent device as well. And here you can see I've already got my key lights set up on the top and now I'm setting up to adjust the temperature. You can individually set buttons for specific Elgato accessories, whether that's turning them on and off, adjusting the brightness up and down. Here, for example, I've set it so that I'm going up on one side in 20% increases of brightness and then down in 20% so you can go up and down quickly and easily. And also you can set the specific color temperature that you prefer for those devices too. Hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you found it useful, interesting, hilarious, or all of the above. Be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting and subscribe and watch these other videos as well that I think might be useful to you and have a great life.